In this video, we'll discuss how to export the audit history for custom objects, or more specifically, BMC Helix Remedy Force objects. If you don't have audit history turned on or set history tracking, you can go into setup for the object. In this case, we'll look at incidents. Go to create objects, locate the objects, and then there's the set history tracking where you can select up to 20 fields. Salesforce for a fee will turn on more fields in the longer tracking history where the data is retained for longer periods of time. By default, it's 20 fields and 24 months the data is stored. Once you have this data, you might want to track changes or figure out how long something's been in a certain status or whatnot. And you can build a report on this uh, by, for instance, incident. We type in the incident history object and click create. And you can see the values for what field has changed, the old and new value. Uh, but the problem is you can't do a calculation on the date time. I haven't figured out a way to calculate the difference for like a status change. Well, how long did it sit in this status? Or how long was it assigned to this queue? So what customers do is they try to export it and then using other recording tools, port it into those tools and use those to create their reports and graphs. What we're talking about, where does this data appear on the form? And this data appears at the bottom of the form uh, in incident history. And if you're in the console uh, and you open a, a record and go to the details section, it'll be an incident history here. Now there's a little, little bit of confusion over it. So if you go to custom objects, you'll see we have a, an incident object and then we have an incident history object. This does not store the history tracking or the audit information for the incident object. Uh, this is another object altogether. When you go into the data loader to export this data, so if you're logged into the data loader and you click export, the first thing you have to do is check show all Salesforce objects. Now if I just type in I and go to the incident history, I'll be exporting the wrong object. I will not get the data uh, that's in this report that I'm looking for. So the way to get the data is you have to type H and then go to the history history objects, you'll see there's a set of objects where field tracking is turned on. So you want to scroll down and get the history on the incident object. So what you're actually looking for is history colon incident, which is well, that's the one, the one I have selected. And you'll see it even has incident history, but this is not the incident history object uh, over here. This is actually the Salesforce audit tracking one. I can't emphasize that enough. So then once you've got history called an incident tracking, then you're ready to do the export and just specify a folder where you can find it. And I usually call it history incident. And that way I'm not confused uh, which data I'm looking at. I haven't accidentally pulled out the incident history data, which is a different object. So go ahead and click save and click next. And depending on what you're going to do, um, you can pull out all the fields. I go ahead and select all the fields, or not that many, and then we click finish. And the operation, depending on how many records you have, it can take uh, quite a long time. Um, in my case, I only have about 3,000. Then we click view extraction. And then here is the data from the object, and you'll see it has the old values, new values. And then there's a create date and a timestamp that you can then uh, import or use in your reports and then do the subtraction or calculation to get how long it was in one status or one queue or, or whatever you need based on that. And when you're finished looking at it, make sure it has the right data. Go ahead and click OK. And then that file will be exported to wherever you put it and available to import into your reporting tool. So this concludes how to export the audit history for custom objects.